Well, hello and welcome to the channel. My name is Johnny and you're watching Hillbilly Modeling. Now, this is part three of our Heinkel HE162A2 Salamander by Tania in 148 scale. And in our last video, we uh, got the fuselage together with the cockpit painted and, and installed and all the uh, uh, landing gear bays and all that taken care of. So, uh, oh, and we got the wings on, <laughs> so that, that was a good thing. Uh, so in this video, we're going to be working on the nacelles. Uh, well, I should say nacelle, because there's one single engine nacelle on this aircraft. And we also have our display engine, which goes on a field stand also, uh, and it's going to look good. And, I, and you can display this kit with uh, either the engine in the open position with the engine cowling open uh, on top of the aircraft, or you can display it on the uh, engine stand. Anyway, best thing to do now is go ahead and get to work on these because uh, we've got a lot of work to do. All right, so this is where we left the aircraft in our last video. We'll just move that out of the way. And we need to take a quick look at our instructions. Now, let's see here. This, uh, step nine, we finished all of this in the last video, except for fitting the windscreen. We haven't done that yet, uh, but we'll be doing that later. Uh, we're going to go on down to 10. Now we're going to leave all of these uh, wheel bay doors off uh, until after it's painted. That's one of the last things that'll go on. And on to step 11. Now we're going to be starting to assemble our engine nacelle. We got our front compressor and the intake here and you can see I've kind of written what color it's supposed to be uh, we'll mix our own paint for that uh, but it just kind of points and, and kind of makes us think that just the inside of that is painted that color uh, I know that the inside of the tube and also the turbine there is going to be painted uh, all that same color now down in step 12 we kind of got the same thing going on here with for the uh, uh, <laughs> for the engine intake, uh, so we got the same color going on there, and I think the best thing to do is we'll just prep those parts and we'll just paint all those things at the same time. And as you can see, there's a lot of little pieces that need to be taken care of. I don't know that we'll get to all of that, but uh, draw your attention to the. Uh, intake cowling there that's going to be the same color as the one that's on the nacelle so we need to paint that at the same time and just looking ahead as you can see here the outside of that uh, intake is supposed to be the same color as the inside so we're going to take care of that but I think we probably should look at this and see what needs to be assembled for painting and <laughs> what doesn't and as you can see here, uh, the front compressor turbine there, since it has to be painted, probably would be a bad idea uh, to try to paint that as an assembly. We'll have to paint that in inside piece separately. But now our intake, uh, we will take, I think, and as you can see here, it is keyed. So when we go to assemble it, uh, it has a little slot there to go into. And so it'll just glue up just like that. So I think we'll go ahead and mount that, and then we're just going to leave the turbine out of it. So with a little bit of, to me, extra thin, just to tack it into place, we'll go ahead and line our key up and get it set up there, right there on the intake. And we want to make sure on the inside everything's aligned, because it does have just a little bit of play in the part, and we don't want it offset any. And so that looks pretty good. And we'll just reinforce our uh, glue up here in the seam where you can't see anything. So we have the same thing going on here with the display engine. Uh, the turbine goes into a slot there, as you can see. And then the other piece will sandwich it together. Now the inside of this is going to be painted the inside as the intake horn on the uh, nacelle that's going on top of the aircraft. And the same thing with the turbine. So we can actually just spray all these parts at the same time and get those painted up. So I think the color we're going to use to prime these is going to be this uh, German Panzer Gray. Or in this particular case, we're going to call it German Gray. Uh, and this is Vallejo Primer uh, German Panzer Gray. Uh, and it is a water-based uh, acrylic paint. 
which makes it easy to mix and easy to clean up. And so you can see here we have went ahead and we've primed these parts. Uh, we primed this assembly here that we glued up uh, for our um, closed nacelle. And we're in pretty good shape there. And also we have primed up both of the uh, compressor turbines there, uh, our display engine, and the inside there for the intake, as well as the uh, intake cowling. So next up, we're going to take a look at what color we're going to use here. Now this is a craft paint uh, that is silver, and that's Anita's metallic uh, silver. And that's made by Rust-Oleum. And so I've mixed it up and thinned it out with a little bit of Vallejo acrylic uh, uh, thinner. And we're going to be spraying that. Now, as you can see, it's, it, it almost looks like a pearl silver. So the darker primer is going to really bring that out for us. And as you can see here, we went ahead and sprayed that. I didn't want, to, I didn't want you guys to suffer through me uh, and the airbrush. So, yeah, you can thank me later for saving you from that. <laughs> but it does look really good. Now, the color of the primer that you use underneath uh, these silvers uh, and metallic colors is going to, to determine the depth of that color. And so I think the Panzer Gray works pretty good for us. And that's a really nice look. So... Uh, I'm really happy with how that has come out. So that looks good. Okay, so back to our instructions. Uh, we're going to take a look here at our exhaust nozzle assembly here. Now this thing is supposed to be a metallic gray. Now I'm not sure about the end that comes out. Let's see. If we go over here to our painting diagram. Yep, it's supposed to be painted the same color. So with that out of the way, uh, we can go back and we need to take and probably assemble a lot of this. Uh, not everything, because the inside of these are going to be painted the same color. So we we'll have to paint the insides a little separate. Also, if we look down here on our display engine, uh, we have the same assembly. We have our exhaust nozzle and, of course, the skirts that goes around it. And we have to paint the inside of those, too. So let's go ahead and take care of this. So the first thing is, I think we need to assemble this. Now it is a keyed part because those fins that are in there are clocked a, a special way. So once we align it and it's a good fit, uh, we're gonna go ahead and glue that up. Now, of course, I've went ahead and cleaned up all these parts. Uh, only the sprue gates was of any issue to clean and sand off. And I have prepared my painting board. And so we're gonna go ahead and paint up both these sections here. So with them nice and secure, we're ready for the airbrush. So the color I've chosen is this metallic craft paint. Now this is uh, uh, metallic uh, charcoal gray, which is really close to the uh, uh, Tamiya metallic gray. And that's going to look really good. And I've got that all mixed up. And of course, I will prim uh, prime this also with the uh, uh, Panzer, German Panzer uh, gray We'll go ahead and spray those. And as you can see here, that gives us a really dark, rich tone. It's really nice. Uh, it's a good look. And it's quite the contrast from the previous color, the silver that we used. So this is starting to shape up to be a, <laughs> a really nice looking uh, uh, engine assembly, I think. So I'm really happy with the colors that I've picked so far. And these craft paints are are really really uh, durable so now we're going to go ahead and start a little bit of assembly and the first thing we need to do is to put that uh, intake turbine in for the nacelle so we're just going to glue that up I'm not really worried about gluing these painted surfaces together at this point uh, there's not going to be any stress on that and the likelihood of it breaking loose inside there is almost zero so I think we'll be in good shape and that's what we look like very nice so next we need to start working on the nacelle and what we have is some poly caps 
that goes into the engine nacelle that allows us to slide it on to those steel pins that we installed in our previous video. And it has uh, these little caps that have a hole in the center of them that go over top of those. And we'll just put those in place. And then the next thing to do, of course, once they are pressed in and fully seated, is to put a little bit of Tamiya Extra Thin on them to secure them into place. Now, don't be afraid of using too much glue at this point. Uh, we do want them nice and secure, and we don't want them to pull out. So next up, you can see I've already removed the paint uh, from the glue uh, surface areas there where we have adjoining parts. And what we're going to do is we're going to check the fit of that uh, outer cone, which forms our nozzle. And we just want to make sure everything lines up good. And we are slightly off a little bit, and the gap doesn't seem to want to close completely. So it's probably a little bit of paint in there. So let's go ahead and take care of that. So what we're going to do is just take a uh, 400 grit uh, sanding stick and on the top of these veins I'm just going to sand them down a little bit, remove the paint that's on them and uh, provide us uh, a little bit less clearance for those two halves so that they can come together. And we'll go back and test fit again. And you guys have been watching these videos. <laughs> you know me. I like to test fit everything multiple times. Now this is a really good fitting kit. So a little bit of paint can hold us off. But we do have like a small corner alignment issue here. So I'm just going to adjust these veins a little bit. And they're kind of offset from one another. Uh, two on one side and two on the opposite side kind of gives us a more concentric instead of a uh, circular fit. So I'm just filing that down a little bit. Go back and we will reassemble this. Now those two halves are keyed and they're different size keys so it's not a problem. You don't have to worry about mixing them up and getting them upside down. And that's a pretty good fit there. So we'll clean off all the dust. And I like to use this little brush that I've got uh, bought it a long time ago is for cleaning keyboards <laughs> get the dust off your computer keyboard but it works really good for modeling and so now we're ready for our glue up if I get my fingers in the right place because the last thing you want to do is put a nice big fingerprint uh, with the to me extra thin onto your parts because you'll have to sand and buff those out and we don't want to do that so we'll fit these up, get them tacked into place, and with the, uh, the main circumference there secure, we can check our alignment, make sure everything's good to go. And with everything in place, we'll just go ahead and commit to cement, and we'll glue up both those seams. And don't forget, uh, what we did with this one, we'll have to do for our display engine as well. So we'll go ahead and take care of that one uh, at the same time. So back to our nacelle. Uh, this is the most secure part, I think, of the two pieces that uh, we can glue together. It's keyed, it has a nice flat surface, so we're gonna start there. And then for the engine covers, it's just two slots on the center uh, structure there and two pins on the inside of the, uh, uh, the actual engine access panel. So we have these two halves to put together on there. And um, we're just gonna check and make sure that we got our alignment correct because there's not a whole lot holding that together. So we just wanna make sure that everything looks good. And then we'll go ahead and commit to glue. Now it's probably best to give that a couple of seconds to set up so we're not knocking it off before we fit the other side. And it's the same operation of course. Goes on very easy. Now what I did find is that the uh, 
the exhaust section there is just a little too close for it. Either it's uh, slightly crooked or <laughs> I don't know what's going on there. So we're just going to pull it just a little bit because we're gluing all this up pretty much at the same time. I'm not waiting, you know, 20, 30 minutes between gluing these items together so we can make these fine adjustments. And so the big deal here is we want to make sure that we get that top seam even between our left and right engine access panels. Now once we get everything looking like we want it, we can go ahead put a little bit of glue there to kind of secure uh, the top section. We want those two halves to stay in alignment for us. And then we can go ahead and glue that joint area. Make sure that we got enough glue on it to hold it. And this, I think, is probably the best way to put this nacelle together. Because um, the instructions don't tell you do this first and do that second. They just tell you to put it all together. So this is the way I've decided to do it. And we'll make sure we got enough glue uh, down the center line. And once that sets off, we're in pretty good shape. So we're going to go ahead and start working on attaching the intake along with the uh, intake compressor. So the way this thing goes together, there is no real alignment pins or anything. So you kind of just got to get it in the right place. <laughs> And as you can see there, it kind of moves around on us. So what we're going to do is we will put a little bit of Tamiya Extra Thin down on the inside. And that's where the part uh, is sculpted to fit. Right there. And we'll let that set just for a few seconds so that uh, it doesn't fall out on us. And then we'll go ahead and make sure that we've got it aligned correctly uh, with the cowling and those engine access doors there and then we can commit to glue there so we don't have anything holding this off and it goes together pretty good really uh, it's just that there's really not too many contact points for correct alignment so you're gonna have to kinda make sure uh, that uh, you got your exterior surfaces flush And that's what we end up with. It looks good. So we're going to want to make sure that this is glued up nice and solid. So we will set that aside and let that completely dry before we uh, mess with it anymore. So while our nacelle is drying, uh, we're going to go ahead and start working here on our display engine. Now it too has poly caps and these little crossover T pieces and I'm starting to chase this around. So best thing to do is grab another pair of tweezers and we'll hold that down. So these poly caps will slide over the same pins that the nacelle is going to anchor itself to on top of the aircraft. So if we want to display this with the engine installed with the open engine covers we can do that too. Now once we got our poly caps in you can see that uh, those uh, retainers there, the brackets that hold those nacelles are keyed. They have a half round peg that's going to go into a special hole. So I'm just going to flip this upside down so I'm not dumping out those poly caps and having to chase those down because they are really small and I'm pretty sure if I lose them they're gone. I'll never see them again. So with those in place we can go ahead and glue up that uh, compressor intake um, turbine. It is keyed. So I've already removed, of course, the paint on the uh, contacting surfaces there. Easily done. You just scrape it off. And then we can go ahead and commit to uh, gluing up the opposite side of the engine.
And it's important to make sure that those pegs get into those holes for those polycap retainers and everything will go together. So there isn't any real alignment pins for the left and right sections of this engine assembly. So you just kind of get it flush and then commit to glue. And uh, once that sets up, you know, you're, you're off and running. I'm just using my tweezers here to make sure that it's set and flush. Now, once we're happy with that, the uh, exhaust section here, it is keyed, so you don't have to worry about getting it upside down. And we can go ahead and glue that into place. I just check in the fit to make sure that everything looks good before we commit to any uh, cement. And there is a little bit of flash on there that I had missed. So I'm just going to square that up a little bit. And then we go back and recheck our fit. That's much better. A little bit of glue, and we're ready to set it. Remember to line up your key. Key in the slot, and we are all set. Now there is a little bit of play here too. Just make sure that you get the part center. And once you're center, it's not a bad idea to go back and run a little bit of extra glue around that seam. Let that wick right in there. And we don't have to worry about knocking it off later. <laughs> so here, uh, we've got two little center sections that need to go in. And I'm being very careful here and making sure that I'm vertical because these pieces will actually, if you're not really careful, you can lose them inside the engine. And since I've already glued the exhaust section on, if it falls inside, we'll have to remove that. So I'm being very, very careful that I don't miss that slot and let that fall inside. So once I get into place, uh, we'll just commit to glue. And of course we have the opposite side to go as well and it's a really good fitting part you can't even really see the seam on it um, so we got the same issue here on this side just want to make sure that I hit it dead center because if it falls inside that's a problem so if you go to build this kit uh, I suggest that you probably should put these two little uh, sections in before uh, putting the exhaust section on okay that way if you drop something inside you can get to it all right so our engine the main engine assembly looks pretty good so we do have some seams that we need to look at and i'm going to use mr primer surfacer 1000 here and the main thing that i'm really worried about is those exhaust cones and uh, they do display that seam, which when I look at the diagrams and everything, it's actually not supposed to be there. So we are going to fill that with Mr. Surfacer. Now we'll just let that set off and dry. Of course, we'll do the engine as well because we have the same exhaust cone uh, on our display engine. And also, we do have the seams uh, that are on the engine itself. Not particularly worried about the ones on the bottom of the engine, but the ones on the top might be visible. So I think the best thing to do is we'll go ahead and run a little bit of Mr. Surfacer on those seams as well. And there's a lot of accessories and stuff that goes on, on uh, the top side of this engine. Uh, so the majority of it probably wouldn't be an issue, but better safe than sorry. Now, once you put Mr. Surfacer on there, you need to give it a good 20, 30 minutes to make sure that it's fully cured uh, before you start sanding and buffing that down. So what I'm using here is a 400 grit sanding stick. 
and I'm just very lightly going over the Mr. Surfacer and uh, uh, just concentrating just on the Mr. Surfacer. I don't really want to get down into the plastic part itself. Once I get the majority of it removed, we'll move on to about a 600 grit. It's either a 6 or an 8. I don't really remember. <laughs> it's the black one. <laughs> uh, and once that's done, we're going to move on to like a 2000 grit here and just polish out any uh, sanding marks that we have left. And once we're happy with that, we'll just go ahead and dust everything off. And we want to check and make sure that that seam is nice and smooth. Doesn't really matter uh, what the look is because you, you're going to see filler that's taken up areas where uh, it needs to be. And then we just need to go ahead and sand the other side as well. Now when it comes to the nacelle itself, uh, those two engine cover halves, they come together and they really have a closed up gap. Uh, actually, there is no gap. In which case, that can be somewhat of an issue. So what I've done is I've just used my exacto uh, knife and run along that seam and then we're going to come back with that scriber as you can see me doing now and I'm just going to scribe uh, a good separation line there between the uh, the two halves because we really want uh, this seam to actually be there because they are two halves that open up to give you access to the engine so we don't want that fully sealed and closed up and with that scribed in, <laughs> my scribing job is not the best in the world, but uh, I think that'll take uh, panel liner nicely, and we'll have a nice uh, separation there between the left and right engine covers. So I think we're doing pretty good. We're in good shape here. So now going back to our instructions, uh, we need to flip over and look at... Uh, the other set of engine covers that we have and that would be these right here in step 14 now these are the ones that you put on top of the aircraft if you are going to, to display the aircraft with the engine in a maintenance position uh, more or less uh, mounted on top of the aircraft with the engine covers open so we need to go ahead and assemble those and get those ready for painting as well Now we only have three parts to worry about here. Well, actually there's three, four, five. But anyway, <laughs> we're just going to worry about the main parts. Uh, that is the left and right engine covers and the center section. So the center section has those little hinge extend arms there that you see. They have a single hole in each one. And we just have to position those and make sure that they're pressed down and they got full contact. We'll let that dry and then we'll assemble the other side. So we want to make sure that that is nice and firm before we start messing with the opposite side because we want those angles uh, for those open engine covers to be the same on both the left and right side. If that is making any sense to you. <laughs> I hope it does. Uh, so now it's time to do a little bit of painting. So one of the things that we need to do is we need to protect those areas that uh, we have already painted. And we're talking about the intakes and of course the interior of the exhaust nozzles. So we do have a little bit of a inside rim there that we can use our Tamiya masking tape and we'll just insert that sticky side out and adhere that right around the inside so that we are protecting uh, those parts from uh, overspray and we're going to go ahead and close up this gap that I have there from having too short a piece of tape and we'll get that into place and we do need to go ahead and extend uh, our mask there uh, and we'll do that with some more masking tape 
Uh, we just want to make sure that we're not spraying uh, the in inside of the exhaust area uh, with the next color that we're going to be using. So now once we got that taken care of, um, we need to do also the nacelle. And so we got that one taken care of. Now these exhaust nozzles are supposed to be semi-gloss black. So we do need to kind of mask those off. I want to protect the rest of the nacelle because it's going to be primed in a different color and it'll have the color scheme of the aircraft. So I don't want these dark colors uh, interfering with that. So I've taped that off on the nacelle and we're going to go ahead and take care of the intake and the uh, uh, exhaust, <laughs> get my head together, uh, the exhaust section just like so and that way it's protected from having uh, overspray. So that looks good. That'll be ready to paint. And I think what I'm going to do here uh, for painting is I'm just going to use my really pointed tweezers and put them right where the poly caps are and that'll help hold that just in place and we'll be able to prime everything up that looks good now we're going to protect uh, the rest of the nacelle because remember now we're going to have this camouflage color going on well it's not really yeah it's kind of camouflage I guess uh, at any rate uh, I just don't want a lot of overspray on the uh, those panels so we're just going to protect that for, uh, for the overspray as well. So we have some other really small parts uh, that we need to paint up for the engine, for our display engine. So I am just using this method of rolling uh, masking tape out, sticky side out, and placing it on a piece of cardboard. Or you could use card stock, it doesn't matter. Now I am going to tape down just the very center edges of it because I don't want that flutter going on uh, where you're using your airbrush and, and air getting up underneath it. And then all we got to do is place all of our parts that we want primed and painted uh, right on to the sticky side. And this should secure everything from falling off and it'll be easier to paint. Now with that done, we're going to go ahead and take a look at what color we're going to prime this in. And it's going to be black. I'm going to use Surface Primer Vallejo Black, thinned out of course with Vallejo Airbrush Thinner. And we've got it mixed up. Now the mixing ratio will depend upon the size of the orifice and your airbrush. So uh, mine is about a 60-40 paint and uh, thinner. And as you can see, I've already removed the mask and everything here from our nacelle. And uh, so the exhaust section looks good. And we've primed the entire engine. And that looks good too. I'm really starting to get impressed with it. <laughs> I love the painting part. And uh, we've also primed the inside uh, of our engine covers. And this is the engine cover section that's displayed with the engine in. And we also have all of our small parts. And as you can see, I have transferred some of those parts over to another piece of tape to paint the opposite side of them. And we're ready to go. Okay, so that will wrap up part three of our HE16282 Salamander and we got a lot of work done in this video. I, I really think that this engine is going to look really really good uh, when we get it finished uh, with the painting and all the little accessories on it. Uh, that's going to be something uh, to really look at and uh, we'll be doing that uh, in our next video. Uh, we've run out of time in this one. Uh, special thanks to all my subscribers it's because of you guys that I keep making these videos and I hope you enjoyed this one. Now if you're new to the channel, I hope I earned your subscription today. 
Um, and leave me a comment. I like to hear from you guys. I like to hear what you think about the build so far and maybe whatever mistakes that I may have made, <laughs> which might be significant. Uh, so with that, guys, you guys stay safe and uh, we'll see you in the next video.